I want to thank you especially for coming, because without you, all we'd have is Joe and I and Crystal kind of praying or talking with each other. That's right. I want to thank you guys for all coming out tonight. It's a somber occasion, and I know we don't want to be here to do this, but I think it's very important, and I want to thank you all very much. As you're lighting your candles, if you could visualize a person or a place that has been sacrificed during these past five years. We ask for the courage to transform our violence into deep and lasting forms of peaceful energy. We ask to bring our troops home and offer them love, renewed health, and the joys that only community family, nature, and the divine can give. Thank you, Thank you very much, Molly. Here's what I want to say as a combat veteran. True warriors know that war is the last resort. In the righteous aftermath of 2001, those attacks of 2001, September 11, we invaded Afghanistan. Almost seven years later, we have not accomplished our two objectives, which were to overthrow completely the Taliban and to eliminate Al-Qaeda from that country. In 2003, as everybody knows, we invade Iraq five years ago today. We have not yet accomplished our objectives in that war. And I think that the main reason that we have failed in these two wars is because we look at radical Islam through the same lenses that we saw communism. What we overlook is that these ideologies, both the communist ideology of 40 years ago and the present Muslim jihadist ideology, we, look, we forget that those ideologies are manifestations of something extremely powerful and unstoppable. And that thing is called nationalism. We cannot substitute our brand of nationalism, our idea of democracy, our idea of freedom, our cultural values. We cannot substitute those things for theirs. We may hate the ideologies represented by the insurgents in those two countries. We may be afraid that if we don't defeat them there, they'll come over here and attack us here. I think that fear is misplaced. But the point is that in spite of those kinds of fears and perceptions on our part, they are going to win. Because no foreign occupation in the whole long history of the world has ever succeeded in permanently defeating the patriots of whatever country is occupied. Even if we say the war is wrong, we are still part of that body, that society. Let us never forget that. Oh, we were very, very to talk about is not me, it's not about what happened, it's about hope. And I believe that those